right, let's now do a case study. And I'm going to split this case study into three parts. But let's deal with the first year. And I'm going to deal with investment property specifically. IAS 40 says that we have an accounting policy choice for subsequent measurement to either fair value investment property to profit or loss or carry it on the cost and accumulated appreciation model. Here we're going to assume investment property at fair value. I'm going to do year one when we do a fair value adjustment above cost. So PRB purchased investment property on the 1st of the 1st 20x0 for an amount of 3 million. Remember, CU is just the currency unit. So it could be dollars, rands, pounds, or whatever. Assume it's your local functional presentation and presentation currency. We've allocated 1 million to land and 2 million to buildings. The tax authority allows a 5% capital allowance on the buildings, not pro rata, i.e. 5% for the entire year. Income tax is 28%. Our CGT inclusion rate is 66,6%. .6%. The base cost, the cost recognized by the tax authority for the land was 1.1 and the buildings 2.2. Now it seems unlikely that we would purchase an asset in this year and have a base cost that's different to historical cost. Just assume that's the way it is. It's for accounting purposes. This is not a course on tax legislation. So the journal on the 1st of the 1st 20x0 is we debit investment property land 1 million they have a buildings 2 million and we credit bank 3 million. So now, for the period ended 31st of the 12th, 20x0, at the end of the year, the land and buildings were revalued to 3.8 with 1.5 million allocated to land and 2.3 allocated to buildings. The accounting policy is to fair value investment property to profit or loss. The reporting date is 31st of December. Profit before tax, including the fair value again above, is 1 million. Okay, that's already got the, the fair value gain in there. And the journal that was passed was as follows. We went debit investment property land, credit fair value gain in profit or loss for 500, being the 1.5 minus the million accounting cost. Don't care about the tax cost for accounting purposes, only when we do tax workings. The buildings, we debit buildings, credit fair value gain PL, 300, being the difference between the 2.3 and the 2 million, 300,000. So now, our deferred tax balance, let me move that out the way, at the 31st of the 12th, 20x0, remember we are going to use sales rates because investment property is always presumed that the carrying amount will be recovered through sale. That's why I used investment property. So land, <clears throat> we have the cost of a million. We have the difference between, well, let's take a step back. The total carrying amount is 1.5. So the fair value adjustments are 500,000. But there's two components here. The 1.1 million base cost minus 1 million historical cost is 100,000. And then the 1.5, Minus the 1.1, well, the remaining portion of the 500 is 400,000. So 1 million plus the 100 and 400 gives me 1.5. The accounting entry that was passed was for the 500,000 fair value gain. Now, let's quickly talk through this. The cost of the land, well, never going to affect accounting or tax profit, right? So the tax base is zero and it is exempt in terms of a temporary difference and we'll have no deferred tax. Then, the amount from <coughs> historical cost, accounting cost, up to base cost, that 100,000 is never going to get taxed. The difference between our cost and the tax cost. Then the remaining portion of the fair value gain, the 400,000, is going to be taxed at CGT rates. Okay, take note, I can't just take the full 500 times CGT rates. I will only get taxed on capital gains on the amount above base cost, not the accounting cost. And that gives me a figure of 74,400, and that will be a deferred tax liability on the land. Then we look at the building. Let's pull up a different color highlighter. The building, <coughs> it's investment property, right? So recovery is through sale not use if it was 
PPE and being used will be a different story, right? So, up to historical cost, well, the building was purchased for 2 million. What we have done, however, is the tax base is still applicable to us. Just because there's no accounting depreciation doesn't mean we don't get the capital allowance. Here the capital allowance is 5%, so our tax base is 2 million minus 5%, 1.9. So we have a 100,000. That 100,000 would be treated like a recoupment if it was sold today and would therefore be taxed at the 28% tax rate, giving me a deferred tax liability of 28,000. Then the historical cost to base cost, apologies, that's base cost. That, well, the base cost is 2.2 and historical cost is 2 million. So the 200,000 would never be taxed or would be taxed at 0% and I'd have a zero. Then the fair value above base cost, the 2.3 minus the 2.2, which takes me now back up to the carrying amount of 2.3 million. Well, that final part of the fair value adjustment, the 300 minus 200 leaves me with 100. And that would be taxed at CGT rates, giving me a deferred tax liability of 18,600. So the total deferred tax on the building is 46,600 liability, on the land is 74,400, and we have sale rates for the land, sale rates for the final components of the fair value adjustments and use rates for the recoupment. Okay, and that gives me a total 121,000 liability. The opening balance here was nil, so the movement for 20.0 is 120,000 liability, so I credit the statement of financial position. Okay, and if we had to pass that journal, let's quickly do it. I would go debit deferred tax, profit or loss, credit deferred tax, financial position, 121. And I pass that journal. We'll come back to the journals in a bit, but this is where I'd get the movement from. Okay. So, first part nice and easy. Now the current tax calc, my profit before tax, this was given to me as a million bucks, if I recall correctly. Let me write that in for you. That was one million. Then I need you to take out the accounting profit above cost, and these were the fair value gains. So for land, that was the 1.5 million minus the 1 million accounting cost. Take it out. The buildings was the 2.3 minus the 2, 300. And this Ladies and gentlemen, I will take and put in the capital gains calc that we'll do next. Okay, forget about that for a second. Quickly tick off the movements in temporary differences. The movements in temporary differences, I had a capital allowance, the 2 million times 5% being 100,000. Nothing for depreciation because it's IAS 40. I have 100,000 movements in temporary difference. If I wanted to be really smart, I could pass a journal for that now. Okay. Generally, I would want to do the journal. Well, let's say I've already done this journal, right? The 121,000. This was split, right? For use, there was 28,000 expense. And for sale, there is the 74 plus the 18,600, which is... What is that figure going to give me? That will be 93,000. Okay, so if I wanted to prove that the 28,000 is correct, I would take the 100,000, let's call this the proof, and I would go debit deferred tax PL, 100,000 times 28%, 28,000, and I would credit deferred tax financial position, 28,000. Now, I'm not repassing the journal twice. That is part of the same journal that I've done here. There it is. The 28,000. That's incorporated into the 121. Okay. 
Now let's go and do our capital gains calc because I've got to see if I need to bring anything in as a taxable capital gain. So let's do that calculation. The CGT calc, the accounting profit above cost, I'm bringing in the land and the building, or building and land, right? The difference between base cost and historical cost is a permanent difference. So take out the base cost of 2.2, historical cost was 2 million. So I'm subtracting, taking out 200,000 Rand of the 300,000 and leaving me with 100. And then I'm going to do the same for land, the 1.1 versus the 1. I'm taking out a permanent difference of 100 and leaving 400 of the 500 for the next step. I then look at my movements in temporary differences, but using CGT rates. And here I take out the rest of the accounting. So the 100,000 that's left comes out, the 400,000 comes out. So I've taken out all of this accounting, right? The 500, I've taken out 100 and I've taken out 400. Of the 300, I've reversed out 200 and reversed out 100. I then must put back in the tax consequences. And the tax consequences here, well, they are going to be zero because it's only a fair value adjustment. The tax authority will only charge capital gains tax when the asset is sold, right? So the capital gain at this point is zero and zero. Add the two together, I still get zero. I then times the zero times the 66,6% and I get zero. So I'm going to bring back in a zero into the current tax calculation. And that's going to be the next slide. There is my nil from the CGT calc. Okay, I took the 500 and 300 out, put it into the CGT calc, and it came back as a zero. Let's quickly go back to the CGT calc and understand that I had a movement in temporary differences in total. The 100 plus the 400 is a 500,000 taxable temporary difference. If I wanted to do my proof, I would then go debit deferred tax, profit and loss, credit deferred tax financial position. It was a taxable temporary difference movement. I'm timesing that by 18,6% and that gives me 93,000. So you're happy that 93,000 is what we had in our original journal. Let's go back. Yep, there's the 93 as part of the 121. Both the use and sales one went to profit and loss. So I can tick off my proof. I'm happy. Okay. So now I've done the current tax computation. I've done the CGT and brought it into the current tax. I've done the deferred tax balance and movements in order to get the journals. So here was our journal, right? The current tax comp, I'm taking the 100,000 that's left as taxable income from my current tax calc, which was added up as follows. The million minus the five and 300 gave me 200. Minus the 100,000 normal temporary difference movement gave me 100,000 taxable income. Times that by the statutory tax rate gives me current tax expense of 28,000. So I debit current tax expense 28, credit the current tax liability or payable 28. Easy going guys, not difficult. <clears throat> then my deferred tax expense, I know I had to credit the deferred tax financial position with 121. And I'm going to ask you to split the deferred tax expense between use and sale. So the use was 28 and sale rates was 93 made up of the 74 400 and the 18 600. okay so that's our journals nothing to write home about make sure you can understand this work through it once or twice the next question well the next part part b i'm going to take the same information so you have to have mastered it and i'm going to do a second year and i'm going to sell the assets in the second year that'll be in the next video thank you